Okay, so let's take a look at these problems on the midterm. Here it says, number one, using complex polar form, find all complex number solutions to z bar equals 2z squared. And the hint is that you may multiply both sides by z, but make sure this operation does not introduce any new solutions. All right, so here it starts out using complex polar form. All right, so here we have complex numbers. The form is not clear whether it's rectangular or polar. But here it's saying use complex polar form. So how do we write z bar in complex polar form? Well, let's go back to the chapter and think about that. I'll pause for a second. So now here's your complex polar form. Here's your complex number. Of course, a plus bi is the rectangular form. The complex polar form is r cis theta, where theta is the angle between the radius and the uh, x-axis and r is the distance from the origin. Right? So this is z. Now where is z bar? Well, it's the complex conjugate. If this number is a plus bi, the conjugate is down below, a minus bi. Right? So what's the relation between the polar form of the number and this complex conjugate? Well, if you think about it, they both have the same distance from the origin. Sorry, I don't have my stylus, so I can't do this, but uh, you can imagine that the radius should be the same, in fact, the radius is going to be square root of a squared plus b squared. And if I have a negative b here, it's just going to be also square root of a squared plus b squared. Because minus b squared is the same as b squared. So the radius is the same, but the angle is different. Now you can take the angle as minus theta, or you could take the angle as 2 pi minus theta. It really doesn't make any difference. All right? Just to be complicated, I'll make the angle be 2 pi minus theta. So the upshot is that the complex polar form of the conjugate of r cis theta is r cis 2 pi minus theta. So why don't I just go ahead and do that? All right, so let's see if I can do this in a convincing way. All right, so we'll have the z bar, which is the left-hand side, is going to be um, r. Not letting me type. We'll try again. Well, there we go. So it's going to be r, and then cis, and then it's going to be, I'll say, 2 pi minus theta. Okay. Alright, so that's the left-hand side. Now on the right-hand side, I have 2z squared. Now how do you square a number in complex polar form? Well, let's go back again to the chapter. And I'll hit my pause button. And here I have found De Moivre's theorem, which is very key theorem in complex numbers. And this shows why, if you're raising numbers to powers, you really want to use polar form and not rectangular form. When you take a polar form number to power, the result is very simple. Here I'm trying to find r cis theta squared, so n is 2. So r cis theta squared is just r squared times cis of 2 theta. So that's what we have here. We have r squared, and we have cis of 2 theta. Oops, got to spell it right. All right, so that's my basic equation there. All right, unfortunately, uh, I have cis's on both sides, and that causes a problem. Now, here it says I may multiply both sides by z. So let's multiply both sides by z. Now, we're still doing polar coordinates, so uh, we have to make use of this. So let me just copy this and paste it because I'm going to be building on that. Now, if I multiply by z, I'll do this step by step, then I have another r cis theta here. Move cis. And then I'll have another r cis theta over here. All right, good. Now, so how do you multiply these complex numbers in polar form? So here I'll just say uh, multiply uh, both sides by r cis theta. I just say it like that. Okay. How do you multiply complex numbers like this? Well, let's go back to the chapter one more time. And here we have r cis theta times s cis phi is r s times cis theta plus phi. In other words, you multiply the moduluses and you add the arguments. 
All right, so let's go back and apply that here. So I'll just copy this and do that. Let's see if this works. Whoops, didn't copy. Well, we'll get there. I'll take this and copy it. All right, so if I, if I multiply the arguments, then this becomes a R squared. And then the cis of 2 pi minus theta times cis of theta, well, if I take 2 pi minus theta plus theta, I hope you can see that, and I don't have to do that out explicitly, that just gives me cis of 2 pi. So I'm just end, I just end up with cis of 2 pi on this side. Then on this side, if I, if I multiply the, uh, rate, the moduluses, I have r squared times r. That's going to give me an r cubed. So let's do that. And then cis of 2 theta plus theta gives me cis of 3 theta. All right. So this is, I can just say this is perform the multiplication. And actually, I should spell that. Fairly better. All right, now, all right, now what's cis of 2 pi? Well, cis of 2 pi is just 1. So we can just write this as okay, so this is r, so this is just r squared equals r cubed cos cis of 3 theta. All right, now, so and then I can erase this part because that's. All right, now, uh, when two complex numbers in polar form are equal, then the radiuses should be equal and the arguments should be equal. All right, so uh, here we have r squared, here we have a r squared here, here we have a r cubed, and I, I lost something. I forgot the two, so let's go back and put twos everywhere. You're probably wondering where the two went, so we'll just put twos everywhere, and this becomes a two. So here we have the radiuses are equal, or the moduluses are equal. And sorry, there's a two here also. All right, moduluses are equal. So that means that r squared is equal to two r cubed. Okay. Now you can cancel the r's, or I can say 1 equals 2r, or r equals 1 half. All right? So that's a, good, that's a good piece of information there, r equals 1 half. Now the other thing when two complex numbers are equal is that the, you can't always say that the arguments are equal, but the arguments differ by, by multiple of 2 pi. Now why is that? Well, it says so right here. For example, these numbers, 2.66 pi over 9, 2.66 2 pi plus pi over 9, 2.66 minus 2 pi plus pi over 9, these are all the same number. And the reason that is, is because whenever you have 2 pi, you're wrapping completely around. Right? So if I take this theta, or 2 pi plus theta, that's essentially the same angle. Right? So when I have this equality here, the argument on the right-hand side should be the argument on the, I'm sorry, that's the left-hand side. Argument on the left-hand side should be the argument on the right-hand side plus a multiple of 2 pi. Now that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it would simply be to plug this r equals 1 half into the equation. And if I plug the r equals 1 half into the equation, then I'll get on the left-hand side This r squared will become a fourth. And that this right-hand side, 2r cubed, is also going to become a, a fourth. Okay. All right, so this is just, here I'm just plugging in uh, r equals 1 half. All right. Now I can cancel the 1 fourth, and I'll get 1 equals cis of 3 pi. Three theta, rather. So this is cancel. Now, if you did this on the test, I wouldn't expect you to do all of these steps out. I'm just trying to be very clear here. 
So what about this equation? Have we seen this equation before? Well, in fact, we saw something very similar just a few minutes ago. What is cis of 3 theta? Right? If you here, you, are, you have cis of 3 theta here, and I can, here you can see the modulus is 1. Okay? So I have the same thing on this right-hand side. If I have 1 to the third cis of 3 theta is the same thing as 1 cis theta to the third power. Okay, so this is actually saying that cis of theta cubed is equal to one. Right. So one is equal to whoops, cis three, cis of theta cubed. Okay, so this is also Dumas' theorem. Okay. All right, so what does that mean? That means that cis theta is a cube root of unity. Right? Now, we know what the cube roots of unity are. That means that theta is equal to 2 pi 2 pi, I can say 2 pi, let me, let me quote the place in the uh, thing here. Whoops, just give me a second. Here it is right here, cis of 2 pi k over n. All right, where k is an integer between 0 and n minus 1. In this case, n minus 1 is 2. So it's cis of 2 k pi over n, where k will be 0, 1, or 2. All right, so that's what we have here. This is 2 pi k over 3. Whoops, sorry. And that's for 3, that's for k equals 0, 1, 2. Okay. All right, so we have two parts. We have the r equals 1 half here, that's one part, and we've got the theta equals 2 pi k over 3, where k equals 0, 1, 2. All right, so that gives me my answers. My answers are, uh, they're going to be, uh, one half times cis of two pi k over three, where k equals zero, one, or two. Right? Now, remember at the beginning here it says that you should check and see that you did not introduce any new solutions. So the way to do that is plug this back in and see that it works. All right, so how would you plug this back in? Well, you'd plug it, so let's go ahead and check. Okay. So let's check. Where am I? Okay. So let's take the complex conjugate. Well, the complex conjugate of this would be 1 half cis of minus 2 pi k over 3. That's the left-hand side. And the right-hand side is going to be z squared. Where was z squared? It's 2z squared, so it's going to be 2 times, oops, sorry, let me go down there. 2 times, and then we'll have to take the square, so that's going to be uh, 1 half cis of 2 pi k. over 3, and then that's going to be squared. Okay. okay, so this is a question mark, so let me put question marks here. I want to check that this is true. All right. All right, so let's do the square on this side. Well, when I square this, I square the modulus, which gives me 1 fourth. When I square this, I'm going to get cis of 4 pi k over 3. So that's going to be 1 half Cis of minus 2 pi k over 3, leave, leave that the same. And then let's take this out here. This square becomes times, this square is going to become a 1 fourth. And then it's going to be times cis. And then it becomes 4 pi k over 3. All right, so that's the square. 
All right, so I have a one half on this side. Two times one fourth is one half. All right, so I'm still not sure that it's true, so I still need to keep the question marks there. I don't know why there are these colons here. That colon shouldn't be there. All right, All right so I have this on the left hand side, and here I make this one half. All right, so the question is, is cis of minus 2 pi k over 3 equal to cis of 4 pi k over 3? Well, the question there really is, is this argument minus 2 pi k over 3 different from this argument 4 pi k over 3 by a multiple of 2 pi? In fact, if I take this argument and I add 2 pi k, then that's going to give me this argument. You can verify that that's true. So the two arguments actually do differ by a multiple of 2 pi. So, so I can say, uh, note that, and I'll do this, minus, let's do 2 pi k over 3. And I add plus to 2 pi k. And that's going to be equal to 4 pi k over 3. Just work it out. You put a 3 on the top and the bottom here, it will work it out. Okay? So the two cis's are the same number. Okay? So we have verified that these are solutions. Okay? So let's recap. Now, I didn't actually do this the shortest way. I just wanted to show out in very thorough detail how to do this. So what did I do here? I did multiply both sides by z in complex polar form. Then I combined the multiplications using the multiplication rule. And then I used the fact that when two complex numbers are equal, their moduluses are equal, and their arguments differ by a multiple of 2 pi. Well, I didn't actually do that here, but I could have done that. So what I did instead was get the modulus is equal, then I, then I cancel the 1 fourth, and I should, instead of saying cancel, I should say multiply both sides by 4. Usually because in abstract algebra, you, when you want to cancel, you always multiply by something. So multiply both sides by 4. Right? Then I used Dumas theorem in reverse, and then I found out that this is a cube root of unity, then I used the cube root of unity property. And so I did it this way. Alternatively, I could have said here, so let me, let me start here, and I'll do the alternative way. Just so you can see that it can be the, done the other way. Okay. So here's an alternate method. Okay. All right, so I have one equals, so uh, let's do it this way. So this means that the argument on this side is equal to 3 theta plus 2 pi times, a, times an integer. Now, what's the argument on this side? Well, this is along the x-axis. It has an argument of 0 because the angle between the x-axis and 1 is 0. So you have 0 equals 3 theta plus 2 pi k. And that's because of... Um, uh, so the arguments differ by a multiple of 2 pi. Right. Now once you do that, you're kind of in modular arithmetic territory. Uh, here you get, uh, I can take the 2 pi k on the other side, I can say minus 2 pi k. Over 3. Oops, somehow it didn't go. Let's try this again. Minus 2 pi k over 3 as equal to theta. All right, so I just did algebra. Okay. Now, what happens if I put in different values of k? Uh, why don't I, instead of what I, plus here, let's make it, just to make it a little bit more convenient, I'll put in the minus here. And then this becomes a plus. 
So what happens when I put in two different values of k? Well, I can put k equals 0, and that would give me 0. I could put in k equal 1, that would give me 2 pi over 3. I can put in k equal 2, that would give me 4 pi over 3. Okay. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I think I have to make a space there. 4 pi over 3. All right, now what if I put in k equal 3? Well, then I'll get 6 pi over 3, which is the same thing as 2 pi. So these are the values of theta that are different. All right. This is really the same thing we did when we found cube roots. So you see here that we are getting the same results. We're getting uh, 2 pi k over 3, so we're getting 2 pi 0 over 3, 2 pi 1 over 3, 2 pi times 2 over 3. So we're really getting the same thing. So finally, in, in sum, the answers are theta equals this, or here, it's right here. 1 half cis 2 pi k over 3, where k equals 0, 1, and 2. All right, so that's the long answer to that question. Now, after I finished the previous video, I just started thinking, if you look at the, if you look at the steps here, there were some things that I did not really do carefully. This step here, r squared equals 2r cubed, here I said 1 equal 2r because I said well, I can cancel the r's. But if r is 0, of course you can't cancel. So you can say either 1 equals r, r, r equals 1 half. Another option is um, r is 0. Okay? So there's really a fourth answer. And the fourth answer is uh, uh, r equals 0. So you can say the answers are 0 and this. So I really need to add that in order to be a correct answer. Okay.